Tisha Little John, and welcome to As Healthy Talks. And similar to the website As Healthy Feels, we cover things related to living a healthier lifestyle. I'm a vegan, I practice intermittent fasting, and I minimize my sugar as much as possible. So we definitely cover those areas, but we also cover other areas related to living a healthier lifestyle. Today we're going to be discussing what things will look like if everybody changed just one meal a week into a vegan meal, a plant-based meal. But before we do that, I want to introduce you to my guest. I have Randy Loban, and he's 20 years a vegan, and he is dedicated to living a healthier lifestyle. And Sadakia Emanuel, who is, this is his second time on the show, and he's the owner of Majani Vegan Restaurant. That's where we are here today taping the show. So thank you guys for being here. Always a pleasure. Always, great. So, first I want you to let us know, you know, tell everyone about uh, what uh, living a healthy lifestyle means to you. Uh, Randy, you start. Um, so yeah, I think living a, a healthy lifestyle for me is um, really based on uh, a lifestyle of consistency, um, doing, doing things that are healthy for your, your body and your, your environment um, on the long term. And, and again, with those consistent principles, and, and, and I don't, even though I'm a vegan, you know, I'm not judgmental in that if for, for people who aren't vegan, like, oh, they're not living a healthy lifestyle. Um, they too can be living a healthy lifestyle, but I think the practice becomes about consistency and really um, having a firm understanding and knowledge of what it does mean to live a healthy lifestyle. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, Sadaki, so please share with us sure. what it means to you. Well, I became a vegan December 1st, 1981, and uh, it was part of my spiritual journey at the time that it wasn't necessary to take a life in order to have a life. And uh, yeah, I've always been an athlete. I was a three-sport three athlete in, in high school, and I've always been an avid runner. It just it made me feel good, you know. It just the recovery time was always was always really good, and uh, just my overall well-being, it just uh, felt good. Yeah. And for me, it was an investment in my own health. Uh -huh. um, and then I learned. As, I, as time went on about you know uh, uh, the environmental impact and uh, what that does to the environment and animal rights and things like that but initially it was about my spiritual journey okay awesome awesome let's get started we're going to talk about um, what it would be like if everyone changed just one meal a week just one meal a week that could be breakfast lunch or dinner just one meal to a plant-based meal what would happen is that people would lose weight and be healthier, obviously. That's the obvious one. Um, there are numerous studies that show that plant-based diets um, are associated with reducing obesity, diabetes, cancer, and cardiovascular disease, as well as increasing longevity. A diet that focuses on vegetables, fruit, whole grains, tofu, nuts, and seeds is rich in vitamins, minerals, fiber, and antioxidants, and that will decrease inflammation and, and help you lose weight. Plant-based foods are full of fiber, which you mentioned before, fiber, which will help fill you up and give you and help you sustain energy. And those foods empty slowly in your stomach, and that allows for a slower rise in blood sugar and insulin levels. Right. Keeping insulin levels in check is important to prevent weight gain as insulin is a fat storage hormone that also lowers blood sugar levels. Filling your plate with whole intact grains, fruits, vegetables, ligaments, nuts, and seeds will not cause a spike in insulin levels so that your food can be used as fuel and not stored as, as fat. I think that what you said is at the heart of why, why um, we have the issues that we have in this country because mm -hmm. who benefits, who profits if you eat that diet who benefits from that if if the top 10 companies are pharmaceutical companies uh -huh. and if you if that is true if by just by eating some fruits and vegetables grains and legumes that that can reverse a lot of illness what does that do to the amount of money that we spend on pharmaceuticals and and all that kind yeah. of stuff it shifts a whole lot of a it alleviates a lot of ailments that you have uh -huh. Uh -huh. just by changing your diet and B, it, the, the, the shift of, of money 
that's a big part of why it's important mm -hmm. to continue that misinformation, to keep that false narrative out there because you're talking about the livelihood of thousands and thousands of of people and billions and billions of dollars that is spent on that could be diverted elsewhere. You know, what would that do to, you know, the healthcare industry that is every time you see a new hospital being built, that's not a sign of progress. A sign of progress is that oh we just closed Jackson Park Hospital because nobody's there. Everybody's uh -huh. healthy. Right. That's a sign of progress. Every time you see a Davida dialysis clinic open up, that's not a sign of progress. That's a sign of regression. That's right. And by changing your diet you can it's a lot of money that is at play about changing your diet because you are controlling your health with just a few dollars as opposed to controlling your health with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars that each each individual has to spend who continues to eat a diet that the standard American diet. Yeah. If I was the CEO of any of those companies, I'd be doing everything I can to make sure you eat the Absolutely. diet, a diet that will keep you unhealthy. Absolutely. And, and I think if you look just historically, um, even going all the way back to uh, slavery and the slave trade, what was the biggest money maker back then? Sugar. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you opened up uh, plantations in Haiti and, and, and all other places around Jamaica, wherever, where to grow sugar, to grow yeah. the cane, to crop and grow and, and produce that cane. Right. Mm -hmm. From way, way back when, sugar has been a major, major money maker, Absolutely. you know, to the point to where now, you know, most of the food, it's not produced in a guy in overalls working on a farm. Your, your, the people making your food now are in lab coats. They're in a, in a little room with no windows, you know, manufacturing, right? Like this weird kind of food in this, this mix where it's, it's almost like a, it's a concoction. Right, you gotta put just the right amount of sugar to get you addicted, mm -hmm. just the right yeah. amount of salt to get you hooked, and then they, they merge them together. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's you know flaming hots or mm -hmm. candy or whatever. But but when it's natural, then you cut out some of the you cut out the, the, the pharmaceutical company, right. you cut out the doctor, mm -hmm. you cut out you know all of those other things. It was a, a good friend of mine uh, used to be on. Uh, you mentioned uh, Davida dialysis. He was going to the one out there in Gary multiple times a week even. Mm -hmm. You know, he uh, just on his own kind of decided he was going to change how he eats and how he can start working out. Mm -hmm. Now he's on a, a regimen through DeVita once every other week. He went mm -hmm. from multiple times a week to once every other week. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and, and all he did was change his diet and started working out. Wow. Right. You know, so... I mean, it, the itself. empirical evidence is it there. It does, it right. does. And you know, I, they will, they want us to believe that once you get diabetes, it's irreversible. Right. Um, like it was interesting. Sentence. I yeah. saw a show, uh, what was it, Blackish, and they had a whole show about the gentleman that the father wanted to try to do it naturally. Mm -hmm. And eventually it came out he couldn't. <laughs> you know, and how many black people are watching that show? How powerful of a message is that for them to see that you can't reverse this or don't try to take the medicine? Don't change your diet. Wow. Take the medicine. I didn't see that. Yeah. yeah. So it's deep. Like I said, if I was the CEO, I'll be doing everything. That's right. If it was my money and I wanted to yeah. keep people sick so I could make money, I would be doing it. I would be doing everything I could. Even. Putting money into the Blackest show <laughs> run by black people <laughs> that mostly only black people it, watch. Sorry, Black. I like. I don't it'd be interesting to see who, who the commercials were on that, yeah. on that episode. Oh, yeah. that is interesting to yeah. see the commercials. Wow. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. The second one we're going to cover today is that it saves money. Contrary to what people believe, it is cheaper to eat a vegan diet than a, than a meat-filled diet. I like this. Um, a lot of times, the reason why I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think the reason why people think that it's more expensive is because they're in Whole Foods and they're seeing these organic, uh, um, what is it, processed foods that cost right. ten bucks for one meal. And um, the, but the thing is, if you're eating meats just regular meats and you're eating regular vegetables, it's less expensive to eat the vegetables. And if you're eating expensive organic meats, they're gonna be more expensive than organic vegetables or organic meals. So you have to really think about it. You don't have to go organic. You know, and it like and we talked about it before about it being less expensive. Lentils lentils is if you Google right now, what are the top five healthiest foods on the planet? 
I guarantee you lentils will pop up in every single search. Yeah. Lentils should be at the heart mm. of not just eat, lentils should be at the heart of everyone's diet mm -hmm. because exactly. it's high in protein, it's very versatile, and it's very inexpensive. You can take, you can have lentils prepared and not do anything to it. In the, you soak them in the morning, you can eat them that night. If you don't have a flame or any, all you need is some water, let them soak them. Mm -hmm. They'll sprout by the end of the day. Okay. So it's just a food that I can take with me if I'm in a rush. If I'm going to take one food, I'm going to take lentils because I can eat that on the run and have a nutritious meal right, right. no matter where I am. And then uh, bag of, a one-pound bag of lentils, typically you can get it for less than $2. I could make, you can make like 25 burgers out of that bag, eat off that for yeah. a week or feed a family of four for two, three days and then have to put your wow. vegetables with that. You said so, $2? Like, yes. So the, so the uh, you talking beans, about saving money. So, you know, meat is like eight nine dollars a pound. Mm -hmm. You know, ten dollars a pound, depending on what you're buying. And so for the for what it costs you to buy uh, a, a pound of meat, you could eat lentils for for a week or two. Wow. And so it's just it's it, the myth is just very, that it is very. But now if you're buying processed, you know, vegan products like you know, I'm not gonna name any names, but right. That that becomes expensive. Yeah. But if you're if you if you're if you're buying lentils or beans and whole grains and stuff like that, those that's at the center of your diet. Those things are very inex inexpensive. It's just a matter of learning how to how to prepare that kind of right. stuff. And you can make you know meatloaf and burgers and soups and all that kind of stuff. Very affordable. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And yeah. and and something that you said made me think about fact that this is for everyone this show is not just for vegans right. and just knowing that about lentils that's something you can start including it to your meals Absolutely. and then you can save money and it's delicious Absolutely. easy to season and taste good for, right. for me and, and I'm not a cook <laughs> and I would just add like when when we started in 81 and uh, in 91 there wasn't a lot of there was no internet right no internet uh -huh. so the resources were very limited right. um i'll tell you a quick story like for me when i first became vegan i used to literally eat baby food <laughs> I, mean, I would like literally what? yeah i would and my thinking was i'm like well they feed it to babies and they got to grow big and strong so it's got to be nutritious right because there, again there weren't a lot of places and spaces you know there, there was there wasn't a restaurant like uh -huh. this you know now you can find a good restaurant where, where you're, you're being served and fed good, wholesome, yeah. you know, nutritious food, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I mean, were we going to just eat French fries or like something right. crazy, you know, and so, so now there's so much information out there, you know, we all have these $35,000, you know, Star Trek phones that can do anything in the world, well, use it to Google, use it to YouTube, you know, and, and figure out how to make you a meal. And, right. and, the, and the meals don't take long to make at all. Mm -hmm. right. It just requires, again, a change in how you think. Yeah, right. yeah. Change it one meal at a time. One meal at a time, that should be easy. So, um, last, it protects the planet. Uh, so, giving up meat once a week is also good for Mother Nature. The water needs of livestock are significantly greater than that to produce grains. And um, approximately, uh, uh, approximately 1,850 gallons of water are required to produce one pound of beef, whereas approximately 39 gallons of water is needed to produce one pound of vegetables. In addition, swapping out meat once a week will help reduce greenhouse gases as meat produced, production produces significantly more greenhouse gases carbon dioxide and nitrogen oxide than vegetables. Reducing meat intake will reduce fuel dependency. About 25 calories of fossil fuel is used to produce one calorie of meat, significantly more than 2.2 calories of fossil fuel to produce one calorie of grain. grain sorry, grain. So if protecting the planet is important to you, that should mean something, just hearing that. That's a huge difference, 25 calories of fuel versus 2.2 right. and the amount of water that is needed to produce the beef versus mm -hmm. plants and grains yeah. yes that's huge yeah, yeah. Now, i don't i don't remember what the exact breakdown is but 
if you, if you were to divide this country up into how much land is used for growing produce, how much is used for growing, uh, for producing meat, yeah, it's like 50, 60 percent of all the land in this in, the, in this country is used for cattle grazing and meat production mm. versus like 10 percent is used for growing produce. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and if you switch that around, you would not only could you produce even organic produce a lot more affordably, but yeah. you would, but you would, uh, you would have a much more healthy mm. country because you're not going to use all these yeah. resources to use yeah. for one pound of meat. Beef, if you're going to continue to eat meat, it should be like a condiment. It shouldn't be where you eat, you know, mm. where you just take a little bit and season, use that as a seasoning versus that is the main course we eat in a 12 ounce That's piece of idea. meat. So if you're going to, if you just hell yeah. bent on it, then it should be like, you it's know, a just point. a couple tablespoons to yeah. season something versus it being the focal point in fruits and vegetables yeah. and grains. Big old baseball steak on your plate. Right. Yeah. No, that's yeah. Just, yeah. no, that should be, I mean, countries that where they continue to eat meat responsibly is just, you can take a 10, 12 ounce piece of meat and that's going to serve a family of eight. It's not, it's not for one person. It's just yeah. not wow, meant to be, it's not meant to, one it's person not meant to be like that. Big old family. Yeah. That's an interesting thought because some people just can't give up things, you know, or they don't want to. But you can just minimize it. You can limit it. If it's not giving up one day, it could be just like you said, just having much less of it on your plate, making sure your plate is full of a lot of vegetables. I mean, that's really what you should be doing anyway is having more vegetables and more of the grains on your plate than the meat if that's what you are going to decide to eat. So. Originally, I was going to do this show about what the world would look like if everyone just became vegan. And I knew if I did that, a lot of people would have turned this off as soon as they saw that. So I want this to be something that's doable for more people. But real quick, just for the fun of it. Those might be, those last two might be things that people are fearful of, but isn't that worth it to deal with culture shock and then just deal with the animals having to adjust if we can end hunger? Yes. And some of the things you mentioned before about the hospitals disappearing, <laughs> especially dialysis centers disappearing. Yeah. So if you want to add anything to it, I mean, I, like I said, I don't want to go too deep into it, but it would be so interesting if everybody went vegan. What would happen in the world? What would that look like? Well, I think the, I think the one thing, my final thought, I would say, is just self-awareness. You know, when you're self-aware, you, you pay attention to when I eat this particular item, that do I, does it start, do I start to sniff it right away? Or does it, or if I continue to eat this way, does that, man, I gained two pounds this week, is it? Why is that, you know, it's because I'm eating products that are, you know, causing me to gain weight. Mm -hmm. What am I eating? So just being self-aware that, that you, you understand your body well enough to know when I eat certain foods, it causes a certain reaction, whether it's weight gain or whether it's mucus buildup, mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm fully aware. If you're eating a, a lot of dairy, you, you should notice that my nose is running and, and uh, you know, I have allergies and all these things that, mm -hmm. that if I'm paying attention to myself, that if I'm being honest with myself, I know that I don't feel good eating this. I know it gives me the itis, but if I was willing to make that change, I could eat a diet that was plant-based, I would feel better. Mm -hmm. I would feel better. So mm -hmm. self-awareness is key, that you understand yourself well enough to know that if I eat, continue to eat this diet, that I'm, I'm addicted to it and I need to take corrective measures to, to change so that I can feel better. Yeah, feel better. And so, I was sharing with you all earlier, the reason I started this was because I heard the saying, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. Right. And I changed it because I wasn't necessarily, my goal wasn't to be skinny, it was, it was to be healthy. So I changed it to nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. And of course, other people heard that saying, and we, people think alike, other people change it too. But I, I just immediately thought, this would be great. Nothing tastes as good as healthy feels because food isn't that important. I asked before, I asked a few people before, I said, what is it that you just can't give up? What is that? And they said different things like cheese, pizza, whatever, you know. 
And I was like, well, somebody told you that if you keep eating that cheese, you're going to lose five years of your life. But you keep eating that cheese pizza? No. Yeah. But who do you, just like you said, Russian roulette, you don't right. know right. what's yeah. going to happen. So why take chances with your life? Nothing tastes as good as healthy feels because healthy feels so good. The right. more I eat better, the healthier I get. It's amazing how much better I feel. I didn't even know I could feel this right. well. And even to the point when you like think about some of the stuff that we do and what we eat, um, you know, no other mammal drinks milk from another mammal. There you go. You know, the human, the human though, drinks milk from a cow. You wouldn't see a cow drinking milk from a horse or a monkey from a dog, mm -hmm. right? So you have to start, again, thinking about, like, why are we doing some of the stuff that we're doing? Yeah. You know, and how have we been programmed or conditioned to even think that way in the beginning? You know, when you uh, mentioned mucus, um, and I mentioned it early off camera that, you know, when I was running, I, I was like, wait a second, I got to get rid of this dairy and this chicken because my joints, were, my ankles were sore when I was, I, you know, I'm logging 10, 12 miles in training, yeah. and I'm like, man, why is my, ankle, why my ankles always sore? And then I said, oh, okay, I, I got some information, realized that chickens produce a lot of mucus in their bodies, mm -hmm. humans naturally produce their own, so I'm doubling the mucus or tripling the mucus right. that's already present in my body. Mm -hmm. That can't be good, right, because... If that was the case, wouldn't have got, God would have just made it to where I had that amount of mucus to begin with, right. you know. And so I had to realize, like, no, that's that's not good. So, and if I want to be this type of runner, then and 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 run without ailments and, and you know a lot of pain after competitions or what have you, or training, mm -hmm. let me eliminate this stuff that I don't even need right. to begin with. Yeah. You know, it's not again. It's not like you need it. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and I think you could have a different conversation if there was if there was a need for it. Right, but right. we don't even have a need for mm -hmm. most of this stuff that we're essentially poisoning our bodies yeah. with. Yeah. I think that I have a tip. So if you are trying to, if you want to give something up or you don't think you need to give something up, I'll say it like that. You don't think you need to give something up. You can still live healthy without it, mainly because most likely you want to keep it in your life. That's why you think that way or why people think that way. But why don't you try one week without it and mm. see how you feel? Yeah. That will change your mind, just feeling that much better from removing Especially, I, I agree with you about dairy, but it could be anything that you know isn't good for you. Sugar's another one. Right. Mm -hmm. Sugar's a, sugar, you'll feel the right. difference immediately, like even a day two. But try it for one week and then see what happens because that will make you decide, hey, it's not worth it. Just like I said, nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. You'll, you'll be saying that yeah. too. You know, I Absolutely. say that to myself sometimes when I want to backslide and eat something I know isn't good for me. I say, Tisha, nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. I keep telling myself that and then I, you're right. No, I'm not going to do it. And I feel good about it because it's just a thought. It's a passing thought and I don't have to act on it. So real quick. We're about to end the show, but I want to give you a both one more chance. If there's any, just like I just gave a tip, if you got any tips, like one really good tip you can share with the people who are watching this. Go ahead, sir. Um, I would just say, um, kind of piggybacking off what you what you just said, um, in a very small sample size, just attempt it, right? And and, and attempt to take one thing out. So if you if you're a big dairy person or a big sugar person you know, beef person, a big chicken person, try and take one of those things out and then, again, just kind of monitor how you feel. Um, and then I would also say just make sure that um, out, outside of just eating um, that you have a some type of workout regimen um, where, your, where your fitness mm -hmm. is, in it, whether that's walking, running, swimming, whatever, you know, uh, going to the gym, playing a pickup game of basketball, whatever it is, um, you know, um, and I think because those two ultimately go hand in hand, um, you know, because again, the body, you're only going to get one body, you know, they're, they're, and, and there's, there's, there are no re, there are no do-overs, so um, I think that would be my suggestion. Excellent. I like it. I would say the last, the, the thing that your mental state is just as important in making transition as, as anything else. If you're in a stressful state or in a depressed state or uh, it's hard to make change, it's a lot easier to make change when you're, when you're in a happy state um, or in an upbeat state. Things are going 
well, that's the time to make change and uh, analyze and just look at the emotion, the emotional attachment to certain foods and understand, you know, why do I love this so much? Why is it that, that comfort food for me? And, and seeing how can I make a change? So addressing your emotional state is just as important. So meditation and exercise, all these things make you happy. All these things put you in a good mood. So if you, if you begin to work out, it, it, it puts you in a state where you wanna, if you're gonna work two, three hours a day or two, three hours a, a week in, in exercising, you put that kind of work into it. You don't want to then go back and eat some potato chips or whatever it is that right. takes you down the wrong path. And so, you know, addressing your 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 emotional, your physical state puts you in a, on a pathway to want to address your your dietary needs at a higher level. So, all those things go hand in hand. So I would I would say start with you know try to work on all three of those at the same time so that it, it, it elevates you in a way that you can feel good about how you look, how you feel, how you look in your clothes, how you look without your clothes. All those things that are important, yeah. you know, for us to have, you know, high self-esteem. Yeah, awesome. I like it. I like it. So we are going. We, we couldn't touch on everything today, but I'm definitely going to include whether you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube on the website. There will be links to different articles that relate to those two subjects that we talked. One is going to be related to if you change one meal a day, and the other one is if everyone became vegan. That's a really fun article to read. Uh, so I encourage you to take a look at it. But thank you for being here. Thank you guys for being my guests. Thank so you. next time, bye. Okay. <laughs>